Good evening and welcome to DL Physics and today I'm going to talk about nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion is the process of fusing two elements together to release energy. So fusion is the process of two plus elements fusing together and releasing energy. Okay, so what I have here is I've got two um, isotopes of hydrogen known as deuterium fusing together to make helium 4 2. As you can see, everything's balanced. Okay, so twos, fours, and of course, helium is two there. And what I'm going to talk about is the energy release. And I'm going to do this in two ways. So I've been given two bits of information for each of the elements. I've been told that H2 has 1.1 mega electron volts per nucleon, and I've got to make that a capital M, because that looks like a milli electron volts, but it's not right. There we go. And its atomic mass unit is 2.0135 U, and my helium has 7.1 mega electrons per nucleon, and has an atomic mass of 4.0026 U. Okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how the energy is released and how the formula might look slightly different, okay? But the answer should be the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the mass deficit. So I'm going to actually look at the mass before and the mass after, and I'm going to calculate energy with that, okay? So I'm going to write this out just like I would write the formula. So I've got 2.0135 plus 2.0135 goes to 4.0026 plus my mass deficit here and of question mark of course equals so if I just simplify that on sides first so 2.0135 2 times by 2 is 4.027 4.0026 okay which means that my question mark is that minus 4.0026, 4 which is 0 0.0244u, okay? So what I've done here is I've worked out how much my mass deficit is, okay? I am now going to convert that into joules, and I can do that numerous ways. I'm going to be using the fact that 1u is 931.5 MeV, so... The amount of energy I have is 931.5. I have got 22.7286 MeV being released, which means in joules, I have got, so 2 to 2.7286 times 1, 10 to the 6, times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, I get an energy being released of 3.63 times 10 to the minus 12. Okay, so that's how much energy in joules I am having being released. And what I did there is I used the information of U that I was given. Okay, so in an exam, I'm showing you both because the exam board may give you stuff in U. They may give the information in mega electron volts. I'm just showing how you can get this information. So I'm using U here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing, but look at the binding energy. Okay, so. Okay, so I know the energy per nucleon, which means I have to times that by how many nucleons I have. So one, I, this data I actually got from a graph, okay? So... Here's an example here of the kind of graph you would get it from. This is hydrogen 2, because this would be where 2 is on the nucleon number, and that would have been 1.1. And this up here, actually it's much, much higher. It's about here for my, uh, my helium, was 7.1. Okay? And this, of course, is in MeV. So I got this information from this graph. So... I have got two of the two nucleons in this one, so I'm going to have 2.2 .2 MeV here, 
class 2.2 MeV goes to, this is important, I have helium, I have four nucleons, so I'm going to have to have seven times 7.1, so four times 7.1 is 28.4 MeV. And as you can see, if I sort out this side, I have 4.4 MeV goes to 28.4 MeV. And of course, I have got a problem here. I have got something missing from this side. And that value, okay, is going to be 4 point, if I had a question mark, would be 28.4 minus 4.4, which is going to be 24 MeV. So this is the energy that's going to be, I'm looking at binding energy now. And as I can see, the sign is slightly different. Instead of plus, this is actually going to have to be take away. In an exam, you do not mind if your sign is plus or minus. What you care about is that the fact there is a difference. The reason this one is a minus is because if the binding energy increases, that means energy was released. So if the binding energy of your reactants is lower than your products, that means energy was released. And that was to compensate to have the strong nuclear force there. So the strong nuclear force has increased. And to do this, it must have released energy. So in here, I've got my 24 mega electron volts. 24 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. equals 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Now, if we look at my data here, so this is what I got from the information from using my U. I got 3.63 times 10 to the minus 12. And this was from reading the graph, which of course has a little bit of um, territory to go with it. But 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12 joules as well. So we're not that far off. I've got 3.63 3.84. There is a very negligible margin of error in this. And of course, that's due to me, of course, reading the graph um, with the information. But what this is trying to show you is that the examiner may give you various different ways of working out the energy that is released. And they may give it to you in um, MeV. So they may give you the binding energy per nucleon for this fusion here. Or they may give it to you in atomic mass units. Whatever way, just stick with what you've been given and carry on until the end and when you convert. Don't convert at the start. Keep with what you are given. And remember, do not round. So this idea of nuclear fusion, okay, this idea of nuclear fusion, the process of two elements fusing together to release energy, means that here my products must have a greater binding energy than reactants. And this is important because fusion can only happen up to a certain point. This is the graph here, and this is um, iron, and this has a binding energy per nucleon of 8.8 .8 MeV. After that point, you can see the binding energy goes down. So if I try to add some more atoms to iron, fuse it to make it bigger, okay? So fusing together to release energy, my binding energy decreases. So instead of energy being released, energy is going to be absorbed, okay? Because the only way that energy is released if the strong nuclear force, the resultant strong nuclear force gets bigger. And iron, if I try to make it bigger, the strong nuclear force actually decreases. So instead of releasing energy, it has to absorb energy. And that there is an example of a nuclear fusion. This happens predominantly in stars. And it's when we get to the point of fusing iron, do we see a star supernova? That is nuclear fusion.